A program to compensate survivors of forced sterilization in California is ending. Many advocates and survivors believe eligible applicants have been wrongly denied compensation. In the second part of the series, I Eyewitness News reporter Annabelle Munoz introduces us to Gina Buffington. Becoming a mother was on Gina Buffington's mind during her 10 years of incarceration. I've always wanted a baby. She went to prison in 97 and in 98 had a pap smear. I later was then informed that I had abnormal cells, that I had cancer cells. Buffington's attorney says she underwent a form of endometrial ablation, a procedure that destroys the lining of the uterus. It's not defined as a sterilization. However, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists states pregnancy is not likely after ablation, but it can happen. If it does, the risks of miscarriage and other problems are greatly increased. If a woman still wants to get pregnant, she should not have this procedure. I don't remember signing any consent, and I know for a fact that no one talked to me. Because if I would have even heard the word, you can't get pregnant, you may not be able to conceive or anything, I would have, I would have held out. For 10 years upon her release from prison, Buffington tried unsuccessfully to get pregnant. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that she learned she'd undergone an ablation while incarcerated. I feel so... like... dehumanized or... just taken advantage of. In 2021, the state legislature and Governor Newsom approved a program to compensate survivors of state-sponsored forced or involuntary sterilizations, including those in California women's prisons. The agency administering the program, the California Victim Compensation Board, denied Buffington's applications and subsequent appeals. It argued that she did not undergo a forced or coercive sterilization procedure. Among the letters included in Buffington's last appeal is a declaration by a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist who cites studies finding the pregnancy rate after endometrial ablation is within the range of sterilization, adding in part, it is imperative that informed consent for endometrial ablation cover the rate of sterilization or inability to get pregnant, and that should a pregnancy occur, there is a high morbidity rate. They're told they would need to use birth control because if a pregnancy were to ever, in the rare chance, happen, it could be lethal and kill the pregnant person. Before joining the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, Cynthia Chandler spent roughly two decades working to uncover and end forced and coerced sterilizations in California prisons. She drafted part of the law for the compensation program and says they specifically did not define sterilization. We wanted to recognize that sterilization can come in many different forms. Chandler first learned about these ablation procedures in the early 2000s as she represented people in women's prisons in cases of gross medical abuses. People were coming to me reporting that they didn't know what the procedure was that was done to them. They weren't informed ahead of time of even what it was called or what was going to happen to them. Linda Gledhill is the executive officer of the California Victim Compensation Board. The statute says that sterilization means no no longer being able to be to conceive, right? And so we look at that in totality and understand um, what a procedure somebody went through and whether or not that qualifies as a sterilization procedure. Yet, as the statute does not define sterilization, attorneys say the VCB's interpretation has been inconsistent. For example, rather than the inability to conceive as Gledhill defined it, a hearing officer in Buffington's case defined sterilization as the permanent inability to produce offspring. I believe they've abused their discretion wildly. We spoke with State Senator Nancy Skinner, the legislator who authored earlier iterations of the bill about the concerns over how the VCB may be defining sterilization as it reviews applications. If there is a you know a legitimate category of survivors who by state action were were sterilized and we and we've just not captured the appropriate definition, that's worth looking at and we will look at it. But time is running out. Buffington and her lawyer are now asking the state court to step in. The paper that is in my hand now that says deny, it makes me feel like I'm not nothing, you know, like just a number. 
still. Buffington says it's important she and others like her are compensated. And stand up and take accountability for what has been done. It's very important, and I will fight to the bitter end. You know, I will fight to the bitter end. Today, Buffington works in a residential treatment facility as a peer support specialist, helping people reach recovery like she did. I turned my life around, you know. I'd have been a great mom. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV and Roku to watch on your TV.